Bloomberg compares cryptocurrencies with gold. The Guardian outlines the OECD's intervention on Brexit. DW reports on organic farming. Le Figaro, France must expel illegal immigrants. The Huffington Post speaks of gender equity being a societal issue. Forbes Mexico highlights a growth in Mexico's tech industry after Donald Trump's migration policy. Join me to take a closer look at what's going on across the globe. I am Elisa Caraballo with all the information you need to know. This is World Today. According to Bloomberg, Bitcoin is transforming finance. However, gold is still winning over cryptocurrencies overall when assessed on the majority of the key characteristics of money, Goldman Sachs groups indicated. Precious metals remain a relevant asset class in modern portfolios despite their lack of yield. They are neither a historic accident or a relic, analyst Jeffrey Curry and Michael Hines stated. Bitcoin performed excellent this year, soaring up to $6,000 after starting the year at $1,000. In contrast, gold is up by 12%. The bank listed several features to compare them, fo focusing on the currency itself and its monetary value, rather than the blockchain technology overall. All of these features include Durability, because cryptocurrencies are vulnerable to hacking. Portability, because transferring bullion can be expensive. And Bitcoins are much easier and faster to move around. Intrinsic value, ever since there is a limited amount of precious metal in the earth, crusts and cryptocurrencies are pretty much unlimited. And of course, last but not least, unit of account, because gold is much better at holding its purchase power and is much less volatile. The Guardian highlighted the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, and its recent statements, which indicate that if the UK considers reversing Brexit, there may be a significant boost to Britain's economy. If there is a second referendum or a new government that decides that a separation of the European Union from the UK is not Britain's best interest, then the economy gain would be absolutely substantial. In case Brexit gets reversed by political decision, change of majority, new referendum and so other things, the positive impact on growth would be significant, the OECD's survey indicated. Ever since the UK voted on leaving the European Union, the country's economy has slowed. Growth in the first two quarters of 2017 was just 0.2% and 0.3% respectively. Inflation has surged and Britain's domestic economy has suffered. The organism predicts that an exit from the European Union Single Market and Customs Union in 2019 would hurt trading relationships and reduce long-term growth. DW recently reported one of Germany's latest and ultimate solutions for the climate and population crisis, organic farming. Even though the practice is far from perfect, there is still a need for a shift in the entire global food system. The biggest challenge the world faces are to reduce waste and to improve the use of resources overall. While some are in favor of this solution, others argue that an agricultural system completely based on organics would impact the environment as much or even more than conventional agriculture. On global average, there is a yield gap of about 25% between organic and conventional agriculture. Organic agriculture depends heavily on the variability of several natural factors and crop yields tend to be much smaller. If the world's production was made entirely ecological, we would not leave any trees standing, stated José Miguel Mullet, a researcher at the Institute for Plant, Molecular and Cell Biology. 
Much other scholars, such as Andreas Gattinger, professor of organic for agricultural and sustainable land use at the Justus Liebkeg University in Gießen, reject this and state. If we would use the world's natural and food resources in a circular way, we would be able to feed even 12 billion people. Because, for example, we would waste much less food or use natural resources as pesticides instead of creating new artificial products. He actually suggested to increase the use of land sharing instead of land sparing, which organic agriculture proposes, and at the same time provides food and enhances a field's soil fertility, increasing biodiversity above and below ground and bolster of natural resilience among much many more benefits. Le Figaro outlined France's newsletter from the Minister of Interior, who actually urges members to expel illegal immigrants for reasons of public order, as well as prisoners who may pose a threat from their release from prison after the attacks observed earlier on in October. The minister emphasized that the existence of a threat to the public order makes it possible to refuse the benefit of the period of voluntary departure. Now this document evaluates the dangerousness of the person in the future. It's actually worth to mention that this assessment remains much aside the criminal convictions itself. The minister stated expulsion is the most appropriate procedure for foreign nationals who pose a serious threat to public order and security, whether they are individuals linked to terrorism or extremist ideological currents or even involved in facts which may also be of particular gravity. The Huffington Post spoke up on gender equity and how it's a societal issue overall. It's not limited to being only a woman's issue. Men also, just like women, need to be enlisted at all levels, including leadership. There seems to be a developing trend to exclude 50% of the population, namely males in fact, from leadership positions at organizations advocating gender equity. Why do you think this is? Men should also be leaders in the fight for gender equity. It's not only the equitative move, it's also good for business since diversity is directly linked with an increase of profits according to studies made by Harvard Business View. Diversity stands on the grounds of qualifications, experience and talent, which must all surpass gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation and similar factors. There's no reason why men should not vouch for gender equity as well, and a lot can actually be gained from it. In fact, there is a long list of men that support gender equity in all sectors of society, in business, in sports, in politics and entertainment too. It sends a signal that both men and women must have leading roles if we are going to achieve true gender equality in business as well as society. Forbes Mexico recently reported on Trump's recent efforts to reduce immigration in the US, therefore introducing new migration policies which has done nothing but benefit Mexico's technology industry overall. Companies such as Amazon, Facebook and other US tech companies are expanding operations south of the border as Mexico works to capitalize on the Trump administration's anti-immigration stance. Oracle plans to expand its offices in the Pacific Coast state of Jalisco. WeWork said it has opened five locations and now serves 6,000 workers after debuting in Mexico City last September. Last September, President Donald Trump's effort to reduce immigration to the United States include new constraints on the H-1B visas for skilled workers, which many tech companies rely, rely on for attracting foreign talent. In addition, over 600,000 Mexican immigrants currently working in the U.S. may soon have a lot 
to look forward for working abroad as a result of the Trump's administration's in September's decision to let DACA expire. Now, DACA is a program that provides protection from deportation to illegal immigrants brought to the United States as children, otherwise called dreamers. So far, five foreign companies have opened offices in Guadalajara, according to Startup GDL, and the organization expects three to five more by year end. I look for people who are mission focused, and I saw a lot of that down there, said Pat Callown, CEO of Espressive, a Santa Clara, California tech firm that opened office in Guadalajara during the month of March 2017. Zapopan, a city in Jalisco, is home to companies including Oracle and the electronics manufacturer Flex, and they estimate that 40 to 50 startups may open offices in this city this year as well as next. We've come to the end of the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Follow us on social networks, on Facebook, Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. Our website is www.mexiconewsnetwork.com. We will provide you all the information you need to know. Remember, you're watching Mexico News Network's World Today, an objective scope across the globe. Until next time.